And I believe that we're live on the twitch.tv slash the assumer doing the live stream. Playing the create mod again. Kicking off where we left off, which was over here. <laughs> we are still investigating many components of this marvelous mod. Uh, we might also be draining the ocean, but I don't think that's really working out. We should we should continue our experiment with this by perhaps like building a bit of a border around it and seeing what goes on here. Uh, we still got a lot of stuff to get through, and according to some of the comments on the last stream that I did, the video was uploaded to the second channel. A lot of the stuff we investigated wasn't particularly in a great order for learning, so. Dang, yo, dang. It can do it. It can clear out water. Now, how far is another question, isn't it? Because with this, in theory, it's going to fill it all back in, or at least partially do that. Mr. Fishy, you are in the way. You do not want to go into that area. All the water is disappearing, I heard. Uh, where are we at over here? Let's, let's do it at this height. This width or whatever. So now, not as much action. A little bit of a water bucket here might change things. Yeah, look at that. It wants to get going again. So I don't know how it calculates what area it's going to interact with, but it is it is definitely interacting with an area of blocks. And it looks like some of the buckets that I placed kind of got ignored there. Mm-hmm. Well, very interesting, very peculiar. You know, if you wanted to clear out an ocean monument, this might just be your best friend. Let's turn that down a bit. I don't know if it's going to impact the game at all, but we'll just uh, slow it down since we're not investigating that so much. Right now, welcome to everyone in chat. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Got peeps tuning in. Uh, Cheesy Squeak says that you're from America and you're uh, you're in you're in school when I stream. Yeah, I guess I guess time zones, you know, probably make it like that. This is a relatively typical time for me to stream. The Ruby Games says me and my friend uh, made and making a 1.16 mod pack using Create an immersive in survival. I say it's quite fun. We of course have some other mods, but yeah. Oh, I uh, I saw that this was sort of available for uh, 1.16. It did make me wonder, you know, what else is? Because if I'm going to make a mod pack with um, with this, it's probably going to be on the light side. I really want to focus on um, the create mod at the core of all the shenanigans and goings on. Speaking of which, I need to familiarize myself with what's taking place in here. We haven't done the chocolate thing. It might be worth investigating that just to see what's going on. And I think we understand pretty much everything uh, all the way back down in these areas. We've done that. We've seen that. Yes, yeah, so now we're kind of getting towards... We'll check out chocolate. And then we're getting into some of these things. Now, we haven't done the arm. I think the arm will definitely be worth... Ah. 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 Okay, so the arm sounds like a cool thing to do next. We come over here and search for the chocolate. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, I was going to think that's like the berry bush, but like the, the, the berry item is like the thing that you can place. But here, it's not, is it? Let's go back in there again. I need to grab these things. And then I need to check out the recipe. Right, so use the filling. That We understand that. The chocolate comes from either a bucket or... Ah, look at that. A milk. Hmm. How do you get it into a liquid? Well, we have seen that you can drain buckets with some of the equipment around here. I think it was this block that you could put a bucket on. So we probably understand the process of making the chocolate. That would be that would be like an objective food, right? Did we also... We looked at the recipe. What about uses? Oh, then that shows your item draining. So the recipe of this... Uh-huh. Compacting. 
The uses, none. Recipe of that, sweet berries with chocolate. That's so cool. Uses, none. So the mechanical arm is what we're going to uh, investigate next. What we'll do is hold down W. We've got a whole bunch of things to check out here. I've got a hot cup of tea, by the way. We're only five minutes into this stream. So we won't be chug-a-lugging just yet. Not that we chug-a-lug our tea. Uh, I also need to pay attention. Let's, uh, let's just drag that back. Okay, they've got to be assigned before. Okay, so is the arm an extension of this? This already feels a little complicated. Hmm. So it's powered, it picks up, and it puts over there. Right, and these are color coded. I. I feel like this this we're gonna have to learn this by doing. Right, I see. And it can put it back into that without the need of a platform in front of it. Curious. If we press D to see the next scene, we might gleam some more insights here. So it's got multiple inputs. I guess when it was color coded yeah, the color coding shows you the input and output. Okay, no options for filtering. Right, that's for crafting TNT right there. Okay. So it knows it's going to have somewhere to put it. This is this is cool. I gotta say though, this this feels like the, the something that has sort of steered a bit away from the vanilla feel of the game. Like this this kind of feels a bit. I mean, the animation's gorgeous. Feels a bit kind of over animated, but I guess it's probably gonna feel very immersive. I was wondering when you get to auto crafting, how do you like balance inputs and stuff? We'll we'll figure that stuff out. The Ruby Games says, do you think 1.17 slash 18 will become the new standard for mods, or is 1.16 already becoming that new standard? I just realised I'm playing in 1.16. When someone said that earlier, I thought they, in my head, it was like the next update is 1.16, but it's not, is it? Hang on, it's talking about round robin here. We should probably uh, pay attention. So if it's got multiple valid outputs, right. Uh, I don't know. I'm not in the modded community enough to know. But it tends to be that there'll be some defining feature of a of an update that, you know, the mod developers will then gravitate towards. So I think the mechanical arm is in round robin mode. Just by default. And it's got three outputs. Ah, but forced round robin will never skip, so if something gets held up. That might help you with balancing um, recipes. This right here might be, if there's three ingredients, right? I don't know. I'm trying to think ahead a little, but you should probably focus on the mechanical arm itself. It can be powered with redstone. I guess that's going to turn it off, right? Yeah, there you go. Pretty simple. Right, so it finishes doing what it's doing. That's good to know. Okay, so we've seen all of the examples, and I've got a feeling we're going to struggle a little bit. We need to put it next to a kinetic energy source. Let's clear out our inventory. I believe the type of cog it likes is the big one. We've got our creative motor. And then we saw it using some depots... Let's go back to that uh, the demonstration again quickly. So these are all depots. For some reason, some are just uh, at different heights. So it said about configuring like this. I, I guess that might involve the wrench. We'll try that. No. <laughs> now that back. Thanks. Let's check the details again. Shift for the summary. 
Right, so right click a kinetic block, rotates, right click when sneaking. Well, that's neither of these things, right? Just disassembles it. Someone says right click it with the arm themselves. Well, I'm holding the mechanic. Ah, oh, oh, didn't I try that a second ago? I, I could have swore I tried that a moment ago. Also, what is the range of this thing? I don't know that. So if I put, let's see. Which way around is it? Wait, it's it's configuring it for the one that I'm holding, I think. Yeah, and then it made like a little bit of an animation. Now, I can't... I got my goggles on. I can't actually remember which one is which, and I can't see it right now. Busy hands. So we did that. Right, now... Uh, we don't actually want to place that down first. So when I click it once, take and then deposit. Okay, now I'm focusing a bit more. So take and deposit, right? Let's see how far it can reach. Mechanical arm is one input and output. So yes, it is. It is as I suspected. Now I can put that there. So it's got to be sort of diagonal to it. And it can reach that far. That kind of looks like it might be its limit. Let's see what happens then if we go even further. Yeah, range limitations. Okay, so we kind of understand how this works to some extent. That's... i got to say, the mechanical arm is interesting. It feels a little inelegant how you click on the blocks before you place it. If you wanted to change something, I guess you'd have to break this and do it again. Not terrible, but um, a little, a little, I don't know. It, it, sometimes, like, I'm trying to inquisit like what's going to happen when we play in survival. Sometimes it's just better to do stuff in survival. Crazy Gamer says, most of the hermit crafters are from the UK. Um, I don't know, because a lot of the hermit crafters are from America, right? And we got some from Europe as well. Uh, you found the Oceana. It's here for five months. We got Roxy Star 28 here with the Prime. And that's it. Thank you ever so much for those subscriptions. Peeps, I'm going to put an emote in chat. Okay? Because I added a new emote. And what I want y'all to do if you got your emotes is to spam away. Let's see if it works. It did. I love it. Let's do that again. Oh, peeps are getting straight on it. Straight on it. Derp coin. It's now an emote. Okay, there's going to be more emotes coming along as well. Look at that derp coin. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't that the most amazing currency you've ever seen? Don't you just want to invest and make stonks? <laughs> uh... Cheesy Squeaks 489 is subscribed with the Prime. You can now spam the derp coin into the chat. Oh man, I should have added some, like, got some crazy script that can count every time someone puts a derp coin in chat. That would be funny. That'll be the price of the derp coin. All you have to do is just put it in chat and it goes up. <laughs> right, hot cup of tea. Prime premium drinking temperature. This is how you enjoy a cup of tea, my friends. JJ Shush is here, subscribing with the Prime, getting their derp coin on now. When he says, I already have 293k derp coin, it'll triple. It'll triple in a month, I heard. Mad Cow Chow is here for 17 months throwing those derp coins in chat. Thank you, my dude. Chernobyl Twitch, you have to be uh, subbed to use the emotes. One derp coin is worth one derp coin, says none. That's a very true statement. That's about the only true statement you can make about the value of this uh, this block. Block? Wow, see, my head's getting all muddled. Cool, so let's try this. I feel like I'm picking this up quickly. And we got gifted subs coming in. Wow. Thank you for those gifted subs. I'll read them in just a moment. My, uh, my brain just clicked into create mode, right? You know what I'm going to search. So, a stack of coal, and it knows how to give it to this. And is it just going to do that over and over? That's sweet. That's really sweet. That's some good tea. That's some good tea. 
I like it. Uh, Rebecca11, thank you for supporting our community with those gifted subs. Dot Danky, Cola Pals, uh, Sanguisins, Spartan Apollo, and Zark Lord Cle Cleai. Thank you so much for tuning in. And also Token Clank gifting a sub to Medieval Methods. Thank you again for the support of our community. I mean, the chat right now is a little bit scarce of derp coin. Let's keep it going, peeps. I only see three derp coins in the chat. Don't let it die. Don't let it die. Oh, it just died. It just died. You're too late. There's now a wall, a wall of derp coins, but you're too late. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, it's different on everyone's screens, right? Because everyone's got different sized chats. <laughs> oh, I've never seen so many derp faces. That's not true. I've seen I've seen walls of derp faces when I've done stupid things before. Anyway, hope y'all like it. We're going to have some more derp coin related... Uh, emotes in the chat soon got some stuff in the works you know let's do like we did at the beginning of all of this let's go from here to over there we need air good stuff right we've got ourselves uh, a little bit of an extended work area when will you do this in survival says hello outside it's a good question really because I don't feel like um, I want to start playing it in survival just yet. I, don't, I, I think that's the answer. I don't know. Because I've got Skybees going on. If I didn't have Skybees going on, I'd probably jump right in. But I kind of want to continue with that. It's been a lot of fun. So back into here. We've done the chocolate. And now we're checking out these. So 10 or more output organizations. I think we can understand how to do the jukebox. We can probably understand how to do that. But what I will say is, doesn't that provide a little bit of a challenge? Now, we can see it can have a gap like this big. So, you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not really that much of a problem. It does make me think, though, like, can it... We know it can go to that height. Can it go up here? So let's uh, grab that. So that's it can take items and then it can put them into all of these. When I change from the arm and go back again, has it forgotten? I think it has. So you have to keep it in your hand when you're configuring it. So let's go ahead. It didn't have any reach problems up here. I should have put one lower as well. So if I go and put that there can reach that high. It looks a bit clunky, but it reaches. What happens if I break it? It's just probably going to continue, right? Now, it, it decided to put it on that one first, and it didn't connect the two together, like, into one stack. So I'm wondering if the order you click them on is the order of operation as well. Let's see what happens. Actually, let's leave the blocks there and see if they uh, get in the way at all. So we've got to do that. Apparently, I picked the uh, coal back up. Some of it. Can it go that low? It can. And it clips through the ground a bit. Cool. So you can certainly do some interesting stuff with this. Uh, Rebecca has gifted subs. More gifted subs. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciating it. We've got Lord Valkovin. Star 6122. Flaming Ale 2008. Mana Tiaut. And D Santiago BC. Thank you ever so much for gifting those subs, Rebecca. We also got 1,300 peeps watching. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to hit the follow button over here on Twitch. Get notified of when I go live. We'll probably be streaming again tomorrow. <sighs> Michael Stickles here for 53 months. Would you say... First of all, thank you for 53 months. Would you say vanilla Minecraft could use some mechanical features? More expans expansions than pistons? I think if developed right, yeah. Maybe not quite like this, but maybe a toned down version of what you see here. Some of the features from it. Yeah, I think so. What what they have to do when they develop Mojang is... Uh, sorry, when they develop the game is kind of be careful to not overreach the vanilla feel. Now, the problem with that is that whenever you add something to the game, people um, tend to go... Oh, this is... Uh, 
you know, this isn't vanilla anymore, it's like modded Minecraft. And it's kind of like, well, the history of Minecraft is it being modified and expanded. So, of course it's going to be like modded Minecraft. I think they, they pick the things they add and um, put in with a lot of thought and care. And so, if they're going to extend into a new territory, I think they need to do it in a way uh, that feels unique. Like, like the Warden and the Skulk sensor. That's something like you don't really see in modded Minecraft, right? And I've noticed that when they try and do things, there's usually some sort of modded equivalent that lots of people like that works really well. And they try not to just, you know, take that and put it in. And they, they try and essentially bring their own thing to the game. And if that's true, it does mean that, therefore, modded things, if someone makes a really good mod, maybe there's less chance of it going into the game. Because they don't... There have been some things in the past that have come from the modded community, like the horse models, but um, they tend not to just take something from modded and put it in. Right. That sounds complicated. Nixie tubes. They sound like a crafting element. Oh, wow. We're going to get into automatic crafting. Let's check out the Nixie tubes. Oh, by the way, this thing has the brass thing on the logo, but... I don't think that matters. Oh, I guess... I guess maybe what you can do is then also have like... Uh, I might have picked out the wrong thing. Yeah. No, that's the right... Hmm. Because we saw that, right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, it can only be... It can only be the one type because that's the way that block works. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now, the Nixie thing, this is actually a block. Okay, I thought it was a crafting element, just by the name of it. Interesting. Oh, okay. That's sort of cool. Hmm. Hmm. I'm a little bit more critical of this mod today, or maybe it's just the things we're coming in contact with, because uh, this feels this feels a little bit more, like, because it's so specific, it feels very, very, uh, like, well, it's easy to say modded, but, you know, like, it steers a little too far from vanilla, perhaps, at least in presentation. I don't know, this this mod's got a really nice aesthetic that's convincing. Oh, let's just, let's, let's put derp. That's the one. So I guess I would need two of those. Don't know how middle clicking didn't give me it then. Interesting. So it'll just do, and then it'll pass it on to the next. And it can go the other way as well. Hmm. So they become a unit and they read left to right. Because what I did there is I clicked on... Um, the middle to see if it go left to right. It went right to left, so it, yeah, it, it puts them together as a group. Yeah, I feel like that's an interesting way to bring text into the game. I I kind of feel like it would be nicer if there was something... Like if you think about how you can use a banner to bring letters into the game, this is nice because it puts two on a block, so you can have stuff a bit more compact, but at the same time, it kind of loads this with a lot of uh, sort of detail, right? Like, this would fit a particular build style, but not another. But I do like the concept. I, I think the, the, the block itself, though, kind of tells too much of a, a story. So if you want to put it into your shop, you know, or, or your sign, all of a sudden you've got to bring in these very specific textures. I'm all of a sudden struggling to, uh, to think. Oh, there's an analog lever. That's... I think I, I think I know how that will work. That will be cool to investigate. Oh, it doesn't actually... I thought it light, lit up, but I guess maybe... No, no, it doesn't light up. It just shows you the signal strength. Yeah. Which, I mean, it could be useful when diagnos diagnosing redstone, but like... Um, looking at it with F3 tells you the power. It'd be cool if perhaps these goggles told you the power of redstone. I, I feel like that's a curious block. I would implement this rather differently myself. I love the idea of having a block where you can just use a name tag. 
and transfer all the letters into an array like that. That's fantastic. I would probably strip out all of this stuff down the bottom here and just have like the glass little tube with the lettering inside. That's how I'd do that. Can you now read chests better? I don't know. I don't think they interact with chests. It didn't show me any more examples. I used it for an elevator number, says Sweats Paget. That is a really good use, yes. That's a really good use for the like number of the floor. Let's check out the uh, analog one, by the way. So, oh, right. No, I thought, I thought it was going to like continuously go slowly to full. Thing with this is, when you get to that, then you start coming back. How'd you go the other way? Shift? Ha. Huh. That's really cool. That's really useful if like you do a lot of stuff with signal strength and you're like, quick, I need a I need a 10 here, I need an 11. Hmm. I like it. That's really cool. Fascinating block. We never checked out the recipe of these things, by the way, peeps. So this stream we have investigated uh, a couple of things here. That can obviously be easily uh, created. As can that. Good for locks, says Pig Power. Yeah, if you wanted to do something where you visually interacted with numbers, I guess that's the way you got to think about it, right? It could, yeah, definitely be like a key code or a lock. Uh, item counters as well. Yeah, I guess it then interacts with pressure plates that can measure items. You have to think. You have to think about how you can use the block. That's for sure. Uh, I think my remarks stand the same, but yeah, if you're going to use them for more technical oriented things, you can get away with the like aesthetic imprint of the of the block. Right, um, so next on the book, I think was the crafting block. I don't know if it has crafting in its name, actually. I might be able to pick it out just by looking in here because I've seen it a bunch of times. It's kind of golden. There is, there is a lot of stuff still to get through. And then there's the gun. We haven't even seen the gun yet. Mechanical crafter, there it is. We got Jack Eck, Jack, I'm gonna say Jackass, because it's Jack XSS. Thank you so much for the Prime, dude, appreciate it. I do agree, it would only work for a steampunk slash factory theme. I find it hard to incorporate into other themes, says Timmy Chips. There you go, you got the you got the idea. Steampunk slash factory, yeah. That's very much it. So uh, what we should be doing here is having a look at the recipe and also how this works. We've actually seen an example of this in action already. Ooh, right, they have paths. Is that just for the animation? That could just be an animation thing. Yeah, I'd guess it is. I couldn't think of another reason. So when it comes to auto crafting, what I what I'm immediately thinking about this is how many recipes do you want to automatically craft? Because the more you do, each one of them becomes a large object in the world that you have to feed items into. Now the mechanical arm interacts with this well because it can just communicate with all nine points. So uh, you pretty much have to use a mechanical arm with this unless you're doing a smaller recipe maybe. Like a recipe with two items, not so much of a problem. Did it do something like, hang on, let's go back. Did it do something interesting then that I wasn't paying attention to? I just wanna... Yeah, so that's like it crafting something from this mod because it's using items from the mod. No, it didn't. Yeah, so this whole like lane thing here is just is just pure animation. All right, so you use a redstone pulse when you've got spaces in it. So if it fills them all up, it'll do it automatically. A redstone pulse will do it if there's spaces. Okay then. That's pretty straightforward. Looking at this next bit here, right, what's going to go on like this? Yeah, so it automatically goes in from the side, you get that. Oh! So what are we saying now? Oh, it means it feeds it into all six. Yes, I see. 
doors. It's going to make doors. Well, that's good. That certainly makes some things a little easier. Let's see the next scene. Yeah. But then... Right, you can cover the slot. Ah, so that's an item you got to make. And the output goes into the chest and you've made a bucket. Very cool. You put hoppers on it, that's cool. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all, all your ingredients go in there, that's good. This is, uh, this is fantastic. I said it before. What a great way to show you how to use the mod. The amount of mod packs I made and... Sorry, mod packs I played and it's like, oh, how does this work? I mean, this is literally showing you. We're looking at the front or the back here. We're looking at the back, right, where the items go in. Uh, no, it's shift. Hmm. So the wrench is the wrench is like rotating where it goes. That's fine. But how did I do I drag? How do I join them together? A shift will remove it. Control? Control click isn't a thing. And left click will destroy the block. I must have missed something there. Luckily we can jump back in. I think it was in this scene it showed us a bit more of that. Lines on the back, everyone's saying. Lines. Oh right, wait, the back is the other side of the block, so... Ah, and then it shows you. Those highlights are always welcome. Yeah. You can kind of join stuff together. Okay, cool. So, we're going to start off with a, a complicated one, I think. Hmm, excuse me. Burping. Mouth burp. And another one. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Yeah, I do have to think it through a fair bit beforehand. I like the idea of bringing items in on the belts, but, you know, it's a bit of extra building that we probably don't need to think about too much. Let's, uh, let's see. We'll go one, two, three, and I want Thor, I think, like this. Could still use the belts. Actually, yeah, I could use the belts in a rather interesting way over here. I'm going to free up a bit of spells, uh, space. It's a good idea to get a little bit technical here and there. Right, we don't need this anymore. We do need some belt action, and I need one of these. I think what I'm going to do... Actually, hmm. Not sure how many blocks I need here. So a belt from there to there, and then we've also got, I don't see it here, Mechani mechanical plow, I've forgotten the name of it. There's a lot of stuff to like learn the name of now. I know there's a brass equivalent, we literally had this thing a moment ago, that's not it, here it is, funnel. I think we want a funnel, and I think the funnel might not fit here. Goes there. So this will actually need to be one block higher, I think, is the idea. Hmm. Is there any public server for the create mod? There could be. I don't know, though. You'd have to go just look it up. Okay, so we're going to put... <laughs> See, what, what I want to do is, like, put the blocks so I can place it at the right height. That's what I'm trying to do here. It looks... And then this happens, yeah. A little confusing. These are things that I'm sure I'd get used to as you, like, play it more. Especially in survival, it's probably a little 
get a bit more intuitive at that stage. So, we're going to have like four ingredients coming in. And they can all be powered on one motor, which is cool. Because uh, this, this beam at the back sort of does it all. There you go, now it's all going in the right direction. And if we put these things on it, there you go, they're going to drop whatever comes out the other end. Now I'm thinking, if you want to automate this, in, in other you know, modded Minecrafts, like there's all these crazy blocks that can just link into your uh, sorting system or whatever, I think it's going to need something like that to complement this, because the logistics of like using what we currently have to move items around in a world is surely going to get a little bit crazy. Because I want four different ingredients here, and these ingredients would be used for other things that you might want to automatically craft. So, is it a question of what do you want to automatically craft? What's actually worthwhile? Oh yeah, I can't do that. Let's put that there. So that would go on top of it. And then it's also the question of like, where do I put this now? Because there's actually no room for it. So, I think this thing would um, go an extra block out. So, we'll put it... Hmm. Oh, it does actually go there. Okay, that's that's fine. Except I want it one higher. So it's going to be placed on top of that. Yeah, that thing can... There's a little too close for comfort. How do we also tell it where it's putting the items? It looks kind of looks kind of ugly because this is sort of in the way of where it's going to go place the items essentially. Also, I'd have to take from these spots and then click twice. It's a bit odd that it's not automatically selecting this one for that function. So now it knows it's got four inputs and nine outputs. Wait, peeps are saying use brass funnels. You can't, you can use regular ones. You, sorry, you don't need a funnel to deposit things onto a depot, I think. Oh, right, okay. I think you're right, yeah. So maybe we don't need those. I think that means this could have been one level lower as well, then. Hmm. Anyway, um, now we need the wrench. This is, this is starting to feel like it's rather complicated to achieve something that you're not really going to want to put all this effort into automating this way like i like this but in survival this feels like a very long-winded thing so far i don't know i don't know how it, how it's going to know where to put things as well We've seen it interact with the mechanic. Where, where was there any uh, mention of right click in front to insert items manually? That's not. That's not about having a filter, is it? Put brass funnel with filter the item. By the way, is this the wrong way around? Because it's going to put it onto the other side. So it's the wrong way around as well. It's got to put it in the other side. Now, you say use a brass... Use a brass funnel as the filter. Oh, this is, this is like, this is pretty... Hmm. I don't want to be, t like, seem too critical straight away, but this is, this is not feeling very... Uh, clean like it's getting there's there's many stages here and hmm. There might be another better way to do this as well. We'll have to think it through So anyway, right we've got all of that then we have to make filters like this apparently Yeah, I can see what's going on now so Uh, iron, 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 iron. 
Redstone, iron, planks. Thanks for the planks. And cobble. Okay, so we can set a filter in these spots. And I've accidentally put it in there. Can I get it back out? It's gone. Where is it? <laughs> uh, that's slightly troubling. That's slightly troubling. I don't know if that's broken something inside of here. It did it again. Which is fine. That time it's there. Oh, maybe I did get it back and like... It went somewhere else in momentary. Because it was covering it. I couldn't see it being removed. Uh, is it redstone in the middle or iron? I think it's redstone at the back and iron in the middle. Okay, so we have attached uh, that as a filter now. Let's go do that. Let's do that as well. Uh, we got Liga Gaming, the one and only editor of the music channel here, gifting a sub to Al Ali Razia Ahani Plays. Thank you ever so much for uh, gifting that sub, my dude. Appreciate all you do. And of course, hope you're enjoying the stream. Ah, look at this. Does that mean it has to be at that height? Yeah, it has to be at the same height. Cool. Right, so we've got the ingredients piling up. And then they stop after a while. That's fine. That is fine. So now we're going to set up these. What did it just do? Set these up. And then these over here as well. Right, now it knows that those can only be gold, which is good. That was very odd. Okay, let's try again. I think we're going to have trouble here. Okay. Uh, this time, let's start there then. Yeah, look at that. What's going on there? What's up with that? Why doesn't it like that one? That one's okay, not this one though. Peeps are saying the cog is in the way. It is, isn't it? No. It's not the cog. It's not the cog. It just doesn't like that one. There's a little X there. What? <laughs> I don't know what this is. But can I make it disappear? That's so odd. Some peeps are saying hit it with a wrench. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what that means. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it got set up like that. So it wasn't the cog, by the way. Let's put that back. See, now we can uh, set this thing up. Cool. Uh, in theory, it's kind of ready to go. I think we have to set up the output, though. Ooh, which is... Oh, my word. It's behind all of that stuff. So I don't... Hmm. I think I might have set it to go over to this end. I'm not sure. But it's behind all of the filters. This is... Yeah, this is, this is getting a bit, you know, finicky, let's say. So to put the redstone in... As far as uh, crafting speed goes, this is going to be slow. Ah, but you can do that. Which doesn't look so elegant, to be fair. Now, it's made all of those, but the output is like, I don't know. Here's the thing, though. 
Let's go back to the uh, mechanical arm for a moment. When we saw the examples of this in action, we saw it doing something with the autocrafter. There it is. So it is set up the way that we had set it up, I think. It's got that thick gold bit. Now look, it's the other way around on that one. It's this way around. Keeps the same power of the crafter. I don't think we've set it up properly is the deal. We got all the items in. But then, you see, we had this path. It was down here. Okay. Rotation power. Ah, got ya. Got ya. Go pinch a cog. See, I want to place it off the side of the block. <laughs> Not that. There you go. Right, and then the speed of that probably adjusts the speed of this. Then we've got a piston in the chest. Okay. Let's take it back a step. Uh-oh. Now we've got a problem. So I guess I need to uh, disable that and get my items back. Which is oddly inconsistent. Like why can't I why could I take the other one back but not that? There, oh, and then it lets me. Very odd. Okay, so let's put in all of our filters. They're all configured to go in. We can see the uh, thing is trying to show us that. <laughs> Chat, you're, you're, you're a bunch of experts, y'all, saying empty hand. What about the ones I took out when I didn't have an empty hand? The first ones I took out, I, uh, I had items in my hand. Oh, dang it, I've... There's no... Okay, very confusing. You know, playing with creative mode might be messing with it a little bit, but this sort of item management thing is, is super important to get right. Ugh, I did it again. Okay, so let's break it first. You see, look, it's gone already. Actually, no, the machine's working, so is it... Is it possibly sent... Uh, so they end up down here now because the machine is powered. All right, so that's the difference this time. Oh, peeps are saying... It's not infested cobblestone. It's not in... What are you on about, chat? Dup emotes at the ready, says Dracula. For yourselves? Okay, that is some regular cobblestone right there. Oh, I did it again. It's so easy to do that. Okay, so everything is in place. We just got to give it power. Then we've got, got to speed that power up. I mean, you can probably make it faster than that as well, right? Like, if you want it to go crazy fast, which doesn't look terribly, terribly great once it starts moving around faster. But now, in theory, it should just be crafting some... Uh, yeah, there you go. It's crafting pistons now. It's doing that. Until it doesn't. I don't know. Does it just stop? No, it's, it's still going. Good. The areas you link together spread their content. So you only need one wood input to get, uh, to get wood across the top. Says Ender Star. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Let's give it a try. Uh, what we need to see is the direction behind. I don't know what it is, but if we break these, those two are good to remove. And look at that. I hmm. No, now I think it's having an issue. Yeah, it spat it all out. Because although... Not the crafters? Oh, not the... Hmm. 
Oh, I think I know what you mean now. So if I were to do... If I were to do that, let's break that one, right? Is this thing going to remember, though, when I put the brass back that it can put wood in there? It's probably going to put a different material, isn't it, and break everything. Yeah, and now it's tricky to see what's going on and diagnose. I've got to admit, this is this is not very appealing. It's kind of... There's just so many steps and configuring to do. And... Like, you can't tell what's going on when you've got these filters on the front, so it's hard to diagnose. And you've got to, like, reset this thing as well. So redstone ended up in there. Yeah, like, this is super awkward to diagnose. I'm I'm not so keen on this. I've got to admit, this is this has been not so interesting. Um, let's go check the diagrams because there was something in here about using less blocks. But that was that one was to make a door, and the point it was making is that one item could go in. Um, however, what did it do on the back then? Oh, maybe that's what I needed to do. Not the stuff at the front. I'm not sure. Okay. So, the rotation thing that I just did was not the right way to do it. That is. Okay. I'm not sure I can do that. But I think that means what we're supposed to do is look at it like... We actually did that with the cobble, just not up here. So now... Uh, we'll change all of this background again, so they slide downwards, even though they're connected differently. So we're looking at this in a couple of different layers now. Then all we need to do is put in, like, one, two... Oh, oh yeah, okay, that's a problem. Uh, I'm going to have to break that, or, or, you know, power it with redstone deposit or something. Hmm... Funny how that works. Okay. Redstone there. Iron here. Wood there. Cobble on the side. Oh, see, look, I accidentally put one in. It's so finicky. So finicky. So there it is, going super duper fast. Oh no, we need two for cobble, don't we? Okay. What I should really do is perhaps put in some uh, redstone down here so I can kind of get used to that habit of like having to use redstone to stop and start it. I, I think we might be able to get away with having it there. Oh, the cog popped off. Why did the cog... That's... I've not seen that happen before. We had stress and it didn't break it. Hmm. Very odd. Right, let's... Uh... Wow. Okay, what's going on there? Is it actually too fast for it? Okay, maybe there is a limit on it. And the redstone isn't doing anything, but that's fine. You can now see it get made down there in that bottom space. What do you think, peeps? Do you think this is... This is good or not, or like, what are your thoughts? Because i got to say, I think it's great and novel, but I don't, I wouldn't use this to craft stuff. You can put hoppers in the back. I can, I guess if you use hoppers. Oh, apparently it's better to input from the sides than the front or back. Well, in a recipe like this, Cuplex, you still have to put one in there, so... You still have to put something over the top of it. I mean... You need it for the 5x5 five five recipe. Ah, okay. Uh, you know what? I don't mind it maybe as a challenge for like one or two items that you need to make that are 5x5. Five five. That's kind of interesting. But this looks sort of slow. And I mean, like, think about where all these materials come from as well. When you want to get to the stage of automating crafting... It kind of needs to be elegant because I can whack all of this into my inventory and go over to a crafting bench and craft a stack just like that, you know, and I can craft several stacks and put them in a chest and forget about it. Like you want your automatic crafting to 
outweigh the convenience of actually crafting. Because crafting can be slow, right? Early to mid game, not late game, says Justin. I think even early or mid. It, like, like I said a second ago, late game, you've got some crazy 5x5 five five recipe. You can't do it in a crafting bench. Fair enough. You've, you've sort of given the player an interesting challenge. But early game, I can't see myself using this for much at all. Maybe... Maybe if you had some sort of um, one item that needed to be converted to another automatically in the middle of a flow of things you're doing, I could see that possibly going okay. Maybe if you've got like a mob farm and it drops the right materials that you can sort so that you've got a source directly here. Because once you've got a, like a direct source coming in, then it's, then it's like it can just run. Right? Like, imagine we had a farm for all of these items hooked up directly to this. Then we would just have pistons coming in. That'd be a lot of work just to automate pistons. But do you see my point? Perfect for kelp block. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's try and find some more, like, in-game uses here. Because kelp would be an interesting one. As I think, like, you wouldn't even need the mechanical arm, right? So we would have the wrench uh, around the back here. Taking out all of that. We would just need to configure this for the output, which we'll put over here. So, chest. Uh, then let's grab a hopper. Let's do things a little different here. Obviously, we could have a belt feeding these items in from our kelp farm, which would be cool. Hopper can go anywhere, I believe. Let's uh, let's do this. And uh, immediately it's going in. That's good. No, not quite. Um, there we go. Anyway. It's not very fast. But with a really high speed, it's... Kind of, that's pretty quick, you know? So what if we were to kind of do that? That's definitely increased the speed. Let's go ahead and put another one right here. Put that chest on top. Uh, I don't know if it's got enough to keep up with it now as well. That's another thought. So that's way more appealing, right? You bring that in from your farm and just that's a really good use for it. That I like a lot. Okay, I'm, I'm down with that. And you can visually see it and look at it, which I think is something you're going to want to build in. So when you go into your uh, Mega Kelp Smeltery, okay, you've got this right in front of you, like a panel over on the wall. You can walk up to it and just see it all in action. I like that. So yeah, imagine putting that in like your in the room in your base. That's seriously cool. You could have multiple of them. Yeah, you could have multiple of them as well. Hop a bottleneck. Um, it's doing all right if you look at it. But yes, the the hoppers will be a bottleneck. You know, there's several ways to deal with that. We could have a flow of water coming in and then have the hoppers set up like this, and that would obviously handle it extremely well. So uh, this is just you know demonstrations of what can be done, I guess. Uh, we've got a noise in the ear from Emmy160 here for 13 months. Thank you, Emmy. I appreciate your uh, support and hope you enjoy the stream. We're at the one hour point. I'm going to drink some water and hydrate over here. And peeps, be sure to hit that follow button over here on Twitch. If you're enjoying the stream, we'll do more of these, I imagine. Use a belt with stacks at a time. A belt might be an option as well. But considering kelp farm is a water farm, you would use water just naturally to move the items across, right? Cuplex says that the mechanical press does this. Well, it can't do that. It can't do that right there. That's some magic. Uh, the mechanical press... What? Oh, I need... I need... What's it called? I need... Uh, what item am I looking at mod on here? Mechanical... I'm sure we did... The mechanical press... The problem is, is that I... As I said, what I should have done is left little dem individual demonstrations, but I just decided to be messy and lazy. 
Or maybe we haven't done it yet. I don't know. Let's check it out. Ah, no, this is... Okay, that's the block that goes over the top of the belts. We did have that around here. I think it was in this spot, but then I must have removed it. Let's go back in. Yes, we have done this one. We have done this one. Okay. But how does that work with a how does that work with this then? Because this is this is a free by free craft, not a compressing. Try it with gold, nuggets into ingots, gold ingots into blocks. Uh Anthony, we're not gonna do that because this demonstrates this right here demonstrates that that can be done. So now we want to think about other uses. Press U on a presser. Yes. Four items go in. Ah, with that below. I'm sure we had that set up somewhere. Does it do it then with more? It only does it with... Oh, no, it does do it with three by threes. Okay. I thought when we learned about this earlier, there was one that did two by two and another one that did three by three. So it can do that. Uh, you know, this is really cool, though. This looks amazing. And it doesn't cost power. It just sort of, you know, once you've got it set up, there you go. So yeah, there's multiple ways of doing these things. So, what else might we want, peeps, to use this with? Because craft, I think crafting it for like, oh, I'm going to automatically craft, you know, comparators and redstone. I think you're going to find that stuff gets a bit, ooh, ooh, a little bit uh, icky. Ender Watcher. Oh, that's Quark right there. Yeah, we want to... Oh, that's Quark as well. We want to stick to the Create mod, really. Check out the Schematic Cannon. Um, we're going we're gonna, to... I think that might be a bit ahead of us. We're going to sort of go through things one at a time. And I think we've still got stuff to do here. Flying Machines, says Ender Dan. I, I'm not good at flying machines. And this is not... Um, that's not related to this. You need a lot of, like, mechanical belts. Yeah. Um, belts are... Cro Wait, wasn't I supposed to press... Oh, yeah, we did that. We did that. Belts are down in the item section. Or maybe not. Because it is actually a... Where are the belts? I feel like I should see the belts here. It's not in that, is it? No. Man, am I blind? Or are, like the belt's not there? There's the belt. Uh, I forgot why I was looking at the belt now. <laughs> oh yeah, how to make them? Ah, there, yeah. So dried kelp makes belts. So you could do that this way. You probably need this for that, is what you're saying, because it's not a it's not a three by three or a two by two. So, all right, peeps. When I say examples, are like what can we do with this? So I don't mean like flying machines and other things. Like, what in the game might this be really useful with on site? Because I'm not going to craft pistons with it. I'm not going to make repeaters with it. Um, things that drop from mobs is. This is where I want to go, into like materials, right? So, bones drop from mobs. Um, I'm not sure if a press converts that into bone meal, but it could do that. Automatic converting of flowers from a flower farm into dyes. These are all one-for-ones, though. Rockets, says Greenbeard Mason. Yes, you could put a creeper farm next to a uh, sugarcane farm. Run it through that process. That's a very simple recipe, though, that I don't think we need to think about too much more with this because if we look at the back of this um, what we'll be doing is just grab this in fact you can you need no free paper for one so a hopper here for paper one there for gunpowder we know how to animate it and do that and make rockets automatically so then it's about feeding the farms into those spots. That's quite straightforward. Fully automated cake factory or bread machine. Um, bread would be easy, Cuplex. The cake is the demonstration they used in the in the beginning of... Well, the beginning. The 
video to promote this pack uses the cake, and the reason why it's such a great exa Ooh. such a great example is because you need a variety of things. So you got to fill up buckets of milk. Got to get milk from cows. Got to put it into a tank. Fill them up. Recycle the buckets. Wheat from a wheat farm at the bottom. Sugar from sugar cane, and then some air, uh, some chickens laying around laying around they could be laying but they're also laying eggs so yeah that's that's the kind of way i'm thinking about it now is like what's a little bit more complicated but would actually you'd still be like yeah this is what i want oh i love these oh those are some great additional chests wow when you when you like pick the right kind of mods to play with it gets pretty exciting this game because there's so many mods out there that just ram in different ideas into the game I like the stuff that just feels like it fits in, you know? Uh, yeah, so going back to this screen. Oh, there's some weird stuff all over the place. Just trying to think about what here is a bit more complicated. Or maybe your prismarine farm, your guardian farm, could evenly divvy out some... Yeah, that would be a cool project. So, massive guardian farm, right? And you take all the Im ingredients that you, uh, the drops you get, prismarine shards, prismarine crystals, and ink sacks if you've got squid there, and then try and evenly distribute it so you steadily craft all three different prismarine types. That that's a really cool idea, I think. That's a that's really awesome. Runes, Dang. diamond hearts, wraith. Oh. These are not from this mod. We're going to have to do that another time. Okay. Um, redstone elements. Like, quartz doesn't drop from anything. So, yeah, I don't see myself mass crafting. Maybe redstone lamps might be convenient if you had a witch farm. Yeah, there you go. Witch farm would allow you to do that. TNT. One thing I would do in a mod pack is make um, husks drop sand. So, sand... And um, gunpowder. Now that one might be a little more complicated to do automatically because you would have to um, line them up like this. So yeah, whenever whenever farms give you the ingredients, that's great. And you can make something on site with a combination. That works. But I think for funneling items around in your world, the belts and having centralized storage, I, I see it getting a little too complex and difficult. Um, that being said, I'm probably going to combine this mod pack with some form of, like, ender chest that works, you know, beyond the player, like dimensional storage. So maybe, actually, you know, there are ways. But I like the idea of maybe a different system delivering the items on site and then maybe make something like this more feasible. Um, let's just quickly go through... Just thinking about all the recipes here. Sea lanterns. Again, the Guardian Farm idea. I don't see anything... Oh, and now we're in Quark territory. I don't think there are too many other complicated crafting recipes in this game. I mean, why would you want to automatically craft beds? I don't know. Some of these blocks? Not really. Maybe. Another idea... Is that if you set it up so that when this thing is full... Which I can kind of like... I can do this, right? And now it only holds one stack. So then everything stops behind it. And you could perhaps set that up for every type of block in here. But then that's like going to be a big large warehouse full of these machines. And a lot of effort for a small amount of convenience. So I think we got it sussed with this one. This is for doing complicated stuff that you could just do quicker in a crafting bench. I think this isn't very appealing. But for stuff that you can do on site with... A flow of items coming in that are disposable essentially then I think that's where you use it hmm I'm really trying to get my head into like how you would play with this because when designing a mod pack you you don't want to like have the progression of the pack stunted by something like this that is slow and not particularly useful um, so anyway lots to think about lots to think about this I don't think is great for making like mass crafting it's good for on-site stuff so anyway I think we should move on we've discussed that a lot create gives you a recipe for sand and quartz does it oh let's have a quick look then 
sand and quartz. Yeah, another thing I'll do in the mod pack is like reset all of the recipes pretty much. Or not reset, but like think them through again because they've got to be part of a tech tree. So gravel can give you these things. That's, um, that's interesting. Oh, oh. Ah, oh. I'm glad I've learned this. But let's, let's do this crushing wheels thing next because... One of the ideas for my mob pack is that you start underground, and I was thinking, do I want to have sieves so that you can and hammers so you can break down and then potentially get all the different materials out of it? This has taken care of that already, so maybe I don't need sieves. There's so much I've got to learn, man. This is like this is how we're gonna do it, though. We're gonna like investigate mods on stream and then like you know get into it. Uh, we didn't do that one. So maybe the recipe is at this level. Oh. That I would say... I mean, it's a way for you to get it from Guardians then. I, I'm not sure if I like that as much. I'm not sure if I like that one as much. But I can see, I can see it's not a bad choice. Crusher wheel can turn cobble into a lot of things, says Cuplex. It looks like it, doesn't it? Now... Um, that gives me another thought. Does this also add any form of like, I might have missed it a second ago, but like, oh, here we go. Is there any kind of like infinite cobblestone generation in this? There probably is because you can just do lava and water and use a block breaker, which we saw earlier. And then you can convert, oh, right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get a little bit into this. This is fascinating. So. Part of the uh, underground adventure that I want to create with the mob pack might just be having to go out and explore to find things, right? And I've been I've been thinking about this idea of having layers of the world held back by things you have to unlock later. So if you want to mine, like imagine the world is dense. Let's go into spectator mode, right? And all the way down there at the bottom. Like, there's some sort of material that you can't mine until you get a particular type of pick. Before you can get that pick, you've got to use some of the create stuff, right? When you get that pick, you advance to the next level. And then there's another roof above that that requires you to go further into the create mod. So, um, on each of those levels, there will be different challenges and things to do. One of them could be just to pick up lava, right? You could perhaps generate the world so there's no lava down there. But there are perhaps mine shafts and, and lava generates in and around it. So you might encounter a cave spider and make it a bit of an adventure. But anyway, like my, my brain is just like ticking over with ideas. Um, and so one of those will be that you will have to go out and get these two materials. This is great. I'm so glad this is in, in, the, uh, in the pack because this is exactly what I was trying to figure out recently when thinking about this okay so uh, let's do it like that yep and I think then you put your lava there and it makes cobblestone there I actually thought it was gonna make it there for some reason cool all right so now we're gonna go and get that breaker thing which it's not the brass hand is it maybe it's called the drill mechanical drill I think this is it There is our mechanical drill. Powering this obviously requires a source, but there you go. Oh yeah, and speeding it up, like all that. That speed, all right, I never learned that earlier because we didn't have this kind of tech yet. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is make the block below it a hopper. Uh, hibbity hoobity hoobity hopper. By the way, we've got Gus Vano here, subscribing with the Prime. Thank you, Gus. I appreciate your support. I apologize for not saying anything sooner. I am getting engrossed right now. I am engrossed. Oh, it took all of that out. Okay, I think we need an inventory cleanup. Oh, Peeps are saying to use a shoot. What's this, by the way? I do not know what mod adds that. Use a shoot. Okay. Oh, that's a cork thing. Smart shoot and a shoot. Now, I'm pretty sure we've done that before, haven't we? Yes. Okay, so that is the, uh, the this mod's equivalent, essentially, of a hopper. 
might work a little more efficiently, might have some other features I'm not aware of. We got Adam Makes Films here, subscribe with the Prime. Thank you, my dude. Appreciate your subscription, and I hope you're enjoying today's stream. Oops, is the word. Um, I should have built this higher up, because what one of the things I wanted to do was sort of funnel it into the next project. I guess what I could do, actually, is just use a little bit of commandage. Official terminology there, commandage. I'm pretty sure that's the plural of commands. Uh, let's go with like 58. Oh yeah, and air. Uh, wow, that's that's giving us plenty of space. So, oh, the shoot actually just kind of drops. I've I've got a feeling that might be useful because the wheel that we're about to use, the crushing wheel. Which, by the way, we always want to check up on the recipes here. Oh wow. Hmm. If this is going to be our early game thing, that recipe might have to change. I really like the fact that the mechanical crafter is involved though, because this is obviously powerful. So it looks like you use it like that. In fact, we can find out by just checking this out. It also looked like it creates a lot of stress. Oh, right. Peeps are saying the millstone is early game. Okay. Oh, I like how that looks. Oh, God, the belt can... We haven't done that yet. The belt can go a diagonal. How have I not spotted that before? I feel like I haven't spotted that before. So, I don't know if the way we're doing it there actually works with it, because it is just dropping from a chute. Uh, they are like not turning into each other is what I've noticed there. Now they are. I, 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 I think that's not working. They just seem to disappear. So I think we need to use that other thing down here, right? Don't stand on the grinding wheels when it's active, it's bad news. Ah, well, I'm not in survival, so I wouldn't have seen that. More speed. Okay, more speed might be what we need. Let's try that first. My only concern there is that that's a lot of speed, and I don't know if I'd be competent enough to generate that much. Hey, there you go, there you go. So that creates that. I like that. That's really cool. Alright then. And then if we go to the uses of this. Uh, there's lots it can do, right? That's good. So these, these are like pretty multi-purpose to get a bunch of stuff going. Powered obsidian. Wow. Powdered even. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's lime sand here. Okay. Oh, so you can get bone meal from this. Interesting. Interesting. Fascinating. I mean, this is essentially the sieve, is the way I'm looking at it. I'm trying to think about how it um, gets used. That's a good way to turn some loot into some gold. What is that? Jeez. Just seeing if there's anything else in here that's like early game. One of the things, if you can get grass underground, then you can start growing flowers and get dyes. There are a lot of questions that I have. Oh, and look at that. You get a you get a bit more of a spread. You get some purple as well as magenta. Ooh, what's that? Oh, that's just regular sand. And then wheat flour. Durite right into lime sand. Grass into seeds. Yeah, so getting grass underground will be an interesting idea. Because that's how you'd then use bone meal from encountering a skeleton, right? 
I'm trying to think about how some of the uh, ideas I got for this pack would, would sort of play out. Okay then. Yeah, and of course you can always add and customize and change some of these. So that's how that works, but apparently the millstone is the early game equivalent. Let's go chuck that in our inventory. I don't think we'd seen this one before. Yeah, I know maybe we did use this one. Red Peter says, finally a use for dirt, right? Finally. Yeah, craft it into something else, right? And that makes flour, I think, putting wheat in there. Hey, we got cheers and bits from 3011 Craft. I hope you're enjoying Create. It feels really well integrated to the default Minecraft world. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you for the cheers and bits, my dude. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I can't wait to actually use it in survival. i got to say, though, um, you know, this idea of having an underground pack is going to mean it plays more like a sky block. Except your underground, you know? Whereas this fits really well into vanilla. Like the Guardian Farm idea that we had earlier just made all of that big sort of... You know, like if there's an ocean monument out there now, we've got this thing to help drain the water. That's going to be fun and interesting. Um, then when we build a farm, we're going to think about how we can take the various materials and automatically craft them. It's just going to be super interesting. So that never filled up any of that. <laughs> Right, so this millstone, um, let's now try and use that over here instead of these grinding wheels. So we've got the chute, we can make it longer, we can put it into another chest, and then we can use... I'm going to go into the crate and look, because i got a better eye for spotting this. There it is. The funnel, I think is what we want. That will be a filtered funnel. And I can't really remember the difference with the tunnel, but we'll get used to this as time goes. So we've got that. Um, this time what we're going to do with our... We've got some of this stuff nearby. I'm just going to grab it that way. So we need that. We need this. This time what we're going to do is go diagonal. So if we have that there, can we go semi-diagonal? No, it doesn't like that. That's not surprising probably going to want strictly diagonal like this. Oh, it remembers where I clicked. So then, can I go from there to here like that? No. So, if I put this here... Right, that's the way it works, I'm guessing. Hmm. Okay, we can understand that. Let's uh, Let's not use up too much of this space here understand how the diagonals work now so I'm gonna go like this oh yeah I actually need more don't I and then from there to there so we'll get the items all the way across here and into the millstone which I think needs to be placed at this level let's check the animation again uh, where where's it got a belt there's no belt coming into it so like that? Is that how that works? I can never remember. Have I done it right, peeps? Or maybe it's like that. I think that might be the way it works. X, millstone is not a direct equivalent. Yeah, we forgot to uh, look at the recipes, so... It does some things here. I can always change these for my mod pack, but... Uh... Yeah, just got to think this through a little bit. So, uh, sandstone to sand, cobble to gravel is in there. No gravel to sand, though. Uh, sand to lime sand is in. No, gravel isn't in there. Let's double check that. Oh, it is, but you only get flint. Ah. I mean, those things can be changed if we wanted to have that as an early game equivalent. I'm not, I'm not into... Oh. Huh. Okay. Uh, what we need are motors. Motors that go in the right direction, right? Right. 
Well, that's what happens if it's uh, not enough. It just stops. Uh, this thing will need a motor as well, but it will also need a cog. A small one, I believe. A small cog. That looks like it connects. Yeah. Might be that it needs a bit more speed, I'm not entirely sure. That's another challenge that I'm going to face if I just go from creative to survival, is not really understanding um, the stresses that you put on these systems as well. It also doesn't really seem to be giving me anything back yet. Output is required. Okay. I mean, can I do an output like this? Just put that on the side. Probably not by the looks of it. Hmm. Where exactly is the output? Right, it is on the side. See, that one was dropping them out of the chest. I guess maybe that's the difference. It doesn't treat it like it's a chest. So therefore, we need to uh, bring it over here. And there it is. Okay. Also, does this thing have like an inventory? Like Most of these blocks don't have a GUI, right? Or an inventory. So you can't just click it and get the stuff out. Yeah, okay. That's pretty cool. Hit it with a wrench. What does hitting hit it what with a wrench? Oh, you can get it out with a hopper. Okay. Or a shoot. Well, it doesn't have a GUI. I guess what I was saying is, you know, does it have an inventory? Like, I can open up and see what's in it. It doesn't appear to have that, right? Unless I'm mistaken. Wow, we've seen a lot of stuff. And I'm not sure where to go next. Okay, so something down here. We've got assemble a structure mounted on a clockwork bearing. Hmm. Make a structure mounted on a clockwork. That sounds really complicated. We'll start with looking at that block. Which is that one there. Hmm. There is a lot of blocks. A lot of blocks. Like I don't feel like I've really scratched the surface much. There's so many things. One of the ones I really want to get into is the uh, like the plow for harvesting crops. That seems cool. Let's check it out then. So clockwork bearing. Okay. Using the belt to power it. That's a trick I've got to remember. Oh, I like the uh, glazed terracotta. That's cool. Didn't this say I've just got to build a structure on it? Okay. <laughs> it's got that flower pot on it. Is the flower going to fall out? Yeah, super glue. Okay. Ah. That's odd. I mean. I get what it's saying, but like, so this blocks and then that one acts like it's a slower moving minute hand. I, I don't, I don't understand why you would do that. I mean, there might be a really good reason for it. I just don't really intuitively see why that would be a thing. Anyway, I guess we can put that there, right? That powers it. Um, super glue is required and some fancy schmancy blocks. Let's go with some uh, terracotta. Some glazed terracotta, like with the arrows. That was cool. Do I need to right click this thing? Uh, I can't break that now, but I can when I turn that off. Okay, so let's go and super glue a couple of things here. 
I wonder what happens in F3 as well when you look at this. Like, they all still look like blocks. You don't even see the uh, glue there. Okay, so now we right click with an empty hand on this. It's got that thing at the back. I don't really know what that means, but... I mean, it's called a clockwork bearing. Maybe... Ugh. Okay, now I'm really not following this. Daytime cycle. Ah, okay. Well, I don't know what's going on with this. Like, that's... Or maybe, like you said, the minute hands. So is this like a rather specific thing? Like, this is for... Okay, that thing is now, like, always projecting that line, which I don't want it to do. That wasn't there before. How do I get rid of that? Right, there we go. A fresh one. Okay. So now we're going to put that there first, and then right-click that. Oh, wait, now... Oh, peeps are saying it's literally because of F3. Oh, right, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, I see. So F3, does that work on, like, every block or most blocks or... Ah... Okay, right. Now we know what that is. Okay, so now... Oh, it's the hour hand. That's the hour hand. Hmm. How do I then make the next hand? Like, I didn't really understand that this was just for making a clock, right? Let's go check out that. I mean, it is called a clockwork bearing. So li literally clock is what you've got to think with this. It did say to... I just wasn't reading it. I was just looking. And it... <laughs> no, I wasn't looking. <laughs> I wasn't paying enough attention. Oh, my words. Yeah, so this bit. Adding a second structure. Something about right-clicking that. And then putting in another one. Ooh. Now I can't add anything. Hmm. Not sure if it's really necessary for me to, like, learn this right now, but... Stop using the glue. Okay. But then that there can have glue, right? And this next bit needs to have glue. Okay, now that rotates for the second. Okay, I see. I see, peeps. Let's make it a little bit more elegant since I now suss this one out. We'll take all of this stuff back. Uh, we'll go concrete. Okay, so... I think I... Don't want it to be shim shamming like it is. Vibrating. It's slightly concerning. Now I'm not sure what it's gonna do. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Start again. Uh, click it, and then the one that I build here will be. Ah, oh, but now I can't build there. Right, so now you got the two hands. Ah, that was cool. We're actually seeing it in action now. I, I'm i not fond of this. Like, I don't know. I've been really keen on all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's like with the windmill. Like, this kind of, like, doesn't feel that Minecrafty, But you can kind of accept it. This feels a little too magical over here. 
like the block that just does the thing. It's not my cup of tea. I probably wouldn't um, use this in the game. But there are other things like it. Okay, so from there, we've got complex calculation and we have uh, the engine of a flywheel. So let's go with an integrated circuit is the next thing it's going to show us. Let's see what this is all about. By the way, I think we're going to have to do at least a third or a fourth on this mod. Like, uh, I feel like we're still not scratching the surface. Well, we're getting in there, but there's a lot, right? So if you want to make a rotational speed controller, you're going to need that. And you make it in this thing, but that also, you know, also just in the crafting bench. So really, that is about using this. Let's ponder it. Okay, I think I think I know what that is in real life. Isn't that where you have a groove in this rod here that is rotating? I think what you do is you have a groove in it. And so as it rotates round, it the, the groove will twist and turn that. What I don't get is how it's adjustable. What would make that adjustable? Oh, you've got half the mod to go, says Cuplex. Okay, half. So maybe we'll do like four streams. I'm also going to like theorize a lot and build some more advanced contraptions as we learn it more. Yeah, so I guess that's pro that looks to me like one that's worth like learning because you're going to you're going to need it at some point. That's what that says to me. You're going to need that at some point, so you better learn it. The depth of the thread on the screw creates more rotations, says Chug. Is the depth of the thread adjustable then? In my mind, I'm not really understanding how that would create more rotations unless it like sinks. I, I don't know. Like, I don't even remember when I like learned cogs and stuff. Maybe even just in school, but uh, it's a thing, all right. Let's investigate. Just had a thought as well. Can I, like... Ah. Okay, now get, now just give me a block. Heh. <laughs> is it me or is it render a little funky? No, it's just because it's, just it's floating and it's all very green. Okay. So, we have this rotating already. Um, I can change the speed of that. Oh. Well, now I understand. <laughs> Now that's that's quite the speed up, considering that's a creative engine. Am I going to use this whenever I just want to have magical amounts of speed? Oh, it didn't rotate the block. I thought it was going to do that. Maybe I've got to stick something like casing on it. Hang on a second, that's a good idea. So we put this on it. Or maybe like the other way around. Oh no, it goes through it, doesn't it? And then we can put our glue on. Yeah. No? No, because that doesn't rotate. What's the thing? Isn't there something that rotates with it? Mechanical bearing, peeps are saying. Bearing, let's check out the bearing. Y'all know this mod. Mechanical bearing. Hmm, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh... We like it nice and peaceful around here, we do. Mechanical, where is it? Mechanical bearing. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> ah! Oh, oh! <laughs> it's knocking me about. It's knocking me about. Yeah, so this appears to be just like a magical way for you to go ahead and change the speed. Now, I'm going to guess there's going to be some stress involved here. I think we should probably run that from an actual source. So we can see like the real game stresses. 
you know, in our world of floating blocks, <laughs> essentially. Like, that looks far more reliable than that, doesn't it? So, yeah, we put in the cog there. Right, then we need those analyzing tools, which are here. So, speedometer and stressometer. Uh, also, don't I have, like, goggles to inquisit, or do I need the wrench? I thought I thought something here would help me inquisit. Oh, I think I took the goggles off accidentally, because I cleared my inventory. That'll probably be it. There you go. So, moderate stress and a rotation speed of 16 RPM. So now the speed is slower, but the stress is the same. So if we go and convert that to 8, the speed is 8 and the moderate stress stays the same. If we put it at the same speed, yep, yep. And then if we go higher, this is where I'd expect to see stress. However, apparently not. So let's go higher again. Maybe it's the application of the spin that then eventually puts the stress into the system. So if there is something at the end of this, rotating, that breaks it. Yeah, so now when we tone this down, now it's 100%. 93, okay. But look, it, adds, it added it before we did that. So now if we bring it down to 8, like, it's still higher than when we didn't have this block. So you could potentially use this to... Well, yeah, you use it to adjust the speed, basically. That's a really... That block there, I think, is going to replace doing... Why did we do that thing? Yes, doing this. So early game, you might do that to increase spin. But I think once you get to this bit, you're going to start to use this contraption a fair bit. Could use it to modulate your factory or stressy bits of it. Yeah, like you could slow something down if it wasn't so necessary. Peeps in chat agree. Okay, it sounds like I have successfully understood that part of the game. That's good news, isn't it? That is good news. Right. Well, that means we've seen that thing. Oh, okay. End of beta. Interesting how... Maybe that's been left in, like, because there's all this other stuff beyond it, but yeah. Okay, overstress a furnace engine. That's the thing to do. Successfully connect a engine to the flywheel. Let's go get a flywheel. And let's check it out in action. Oh, what on earth are those blocks? That's that's basically saying what like fuel as energy into to create the rotational force. I like that. I like that. But that looks fairly advanced. So I'm guessing the recipe is going to be maybe not for this thing. Okay, yeah. Brass is uh pretty pretty basic, isn't it? Hmm, maybe it's a bit developed. But brass. Brass is the thing for the flywheel. Now that came along with a couple of other blocks as well. One that kind of like hid over the hood. Is that actually the thing that's said to overstress? Right there. That might be it. I think what you might do is just put it next door. So we come over here. Blast furnace. Yeah, then it puts the little hood over it. I like that. Then the flight... Wait, how did it attach? Like... Was that... That was not what we saw. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because that's got a... Ah. Can it go further? No. Heart of the factory. We've done it. We've done it, peeps. We found the heart of the factory. In goes the coal. For some reason, it went into the bottom. Actually, what are we doing here? Are we just smelting anything? 
Oh, okay. Okay, so this isn't straightforward now. Let's see the uses of this thing. And see if it brings... Hmm. It's going to bring up that. While the attached furnace is right... Oh. What did I do a second ago? I can smelt cobble, but it doesn't make a fuel source. If you smelt... Hmm. If you smelt wood, it does make a fuel source as the output. So maybe you don't get any output here. No. Oh, blast furnace. Ah. Yeah. That's the one. Let's go to the ore. Do y'all want a dirt button? All right. All right, you know. I'm in engaging with a new mod. All right. I'm trying to suss it out. Figure out what's going on. Oh, it uses furnaces, does it? Oh, well, let's let's get it. Let's get that furnace. Go oh, oh, I so I forgot it was a blast furnace. Well, God, terrible me. What an idiot. What kind of idiot forgets there are two types of furnaces in this game, eh? What type of idiot does that? Is it this idiot, or or is it the idiot that actually thinks there's only two? Oh, oh, I'm playing this one back on you. You fools. There's also the smoker. Oh, laying down the slam dunk. Oh, they called me a derp. They forgot about the smoker. Okay, th to be fair, there are people in chat saying three. There's people in chat that know their Minecraft, okay? I know my Minecraft. Come on now. That's cool. I really like that. That's a... Uh, how much stress is that? 32,000? And this thing over here at its current speed is... Ooh, that's a massive upgrade. To me, it kind of feels like you might go straight towards having something like this. Then again, you need a farm to put in two types of items. Which then also makes me think, right? The blast furnace would be significantly harder. Actually, I'm going to... Oh, no! Oh, sad face. Sad face. Big time sad face. Okay, let's uh, go get a regular furnace. I'm just thinking now that you get double, but then you'd have to work with, like, ores, I think? Unless there's something else, maybe, that I haven't thought of. You'd have to work with ores, whereas that, you could have a cobblestone generator and a fuel source, and then, well, hey, kinetic energy. What about the campfire, though, says Vern? Oh, it's Vern! Oh, shut up, you smarty pants, with your fourth way of smelting items. Oh, you make me sick with your Minecraft knowledge. Trying to show me up. Oh, can't believe it. Can't believe it. Jeez. <laughs> Campfire is smoker, to, smoker, though. Yeah, but it's another block that can smelt, right? I'm going to allow this. Five because soul campfires, says Okshu shenanigans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just riding the back of someone else's success you are, aren't you? I see what you're doing. Oh, that was their idea. You just remembered the old soul campfire. Jeez. Jeez. Right, okay, enough of this. <laughs> uh, we have too much fun. We have too much fun on these streams. Okay. Oh yeah, we gotta do that. High levels of stress. Uh, what would be the quickest way to do this? Maybe we just use the thing from a second ago. Turn it up to the maximum. Uh, attach just a couple of things, probably. Just a couple of things. Some shafts. Did I miss a step? Maybe I gotta do that, then that. Oh, wait, it's the cog at the top that changes. Right, yeah. We use the big cog, we did. Yeah. Eventually, I'll... I'll find a way! Place, damn it! There we go. It won't let me. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Finally. All this do if I'm in. Oh, do you know what? I should uh, do that. And what happen if I'm in survival? Nothing. Nothing. I'm in survival. Nothing. Okay. 
My head is clearly being obliterated, but nothing. Alright then, let's get this thing and then go ahead and uh, attach something to cause some stress. Not that. Cart assembler? <gasps> with minecarts? That sounds cool. Oh my goodness me, can you load up minecarts of items? That'd be super awesome. Super duper awesome. So it is actually putting kinetic stress somewhere in this system. Low. Currently low. So if I go ahead and just put that there and then... This thing isn't spinning. Why ain't you spinning, buddy? What did I... Did I miss? Oh! <laughs> low. That's just low stress, is it? What's going to give me some high stress here, peeps? You can make moving structures, says Dr. Pickle. Try crushing wheels and drills. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. Kinetic stress. Oh, literally, literally that one. So is there anything with, like, 16? Or maybe they all always come in the same categories of, like, 4, 8, and 2. So that's all I'm seeing. And a 1, did I just see? Yeah, there's a 1. Oh, oh, oh what was that? 16... I saw one that was like a different color. There it is. Speed requirement. Ah. Okay. So that has put in. Now, does this thing. Aha, look. Oh, you could build an array of them for like multiple materials. Interesting. That's got us at a, a low 25%. 50. I mean, you could build an array anyway, but like. Now, now I'm looking at it differently. And that broke the thing. I mean, I was expecting something a little bit more spectacular than that, to be fair. Well, now we know how that how that works. Rebecca says, I need food, but I'm having too much of a laugh right now. I mean, it's difficult to eat when you're laughing. Okay? I don't recommend it. Especially if it's soup. Okay? I don't know why I was, I was eating soup and watching a comedy. It, I, I just made a big mess, you know? They were telling jokes, I was laughing, I was trying to get the spoon in there. Oh, it, it was a horrible sight to see, you know. It would have been like, X, put the spoon down, come on. Or turn off turn off the telly, jeez. Don't, don't do both at the same time, you're just, you're just degrading yourself, really. Anyway, um, what is next? There's still so many blocks, and I, I, I kind of want to go back to some we've done before and reuse them as we learn about stuff. The guns are going to be super interesting, I've seen a little bit of those. We are like getting towards the the end of all the advancements, so we'll start to scan through the blocks one by one, right? Also, we need to get an upgrade and go find some diamonds. Those are things that we need to do. Tree fertilizer. Ooh. Yeah, what other blocks? So there's a schematic cannon. Schematic table. We're going to learn some redstone stuff. Stockpiles. There, there are stuff here that aren't even mentioned elsewhere. So definitely a lot of things still to go through. Ah, a moving contraption. A seat for a moving contraption. Yeah, and then we're going to have to do some flying machine stuff as well. What is this? Oh my goodness me. Okay. Ah, so it's like a piston that you can tell it to be stuck to or not. Oh, man. Like, those elements of this, I know they require so much more, like, knowledge and sophist sophistication. That's not the right word. But, you know, like, they, they require a really good understanding of redstone. And I do not flex my redstone that much. Like, um, back in the day, I used to do, like, you know, building doors and... You know, understand it, but you have to practice it a lot to stay good at it. Someone like Mumbo would be great. Well, is great for this. I saw Mumbo playing it because he understands that stuff because he does it constantly. And then he can then, you know, think so much differently about how to use that. For me, it's a little bit like, ooh, what's this? I'm going to have to start thinking different, you know. But, you know, one of the things I want to do with this mod is get to a point where I'm playing it in survival. And then... 
as you build out a base, as you do, and you put indoors, you can start to think a little bit more complicated, one step at a time. And then maybe, you know, when you see a use for something, like, oh, if I could get this to do that, then it then it provides an incentive to figure it out. When you don't have an idea of quite what you're going to use something for, it can be then difficult to figure out what you are going to do with it. So, kind of like right now, I'm looking at some of these things and thinking, it's cool, but I don't exactly know what I'm going to do with it. Ah, sticky mechanical piston. I saw Mumbo using those things with the extension, yeah. So there's still a long way to go with all of this, right? And controller rails? Hmm. I like the idea of using that with the cart assembler. So this is probably going to have like a minecart come in. And... Oh! That looks fascinating. So it moves the... Oh, man, I love this. Like... Oh, what's it going to do now? That's crazy. I love the idea... Oh, and then it broke. I love the idea of... Uh... I love the idea of moving items around physically like that. Like seeing blocks getting moved around in the factory or whatever you end up building. Press D to go to the next page. Oh, right, on that one. Yes, I've been I've been not paying attention really. There's multiple scenes. Okay, so can it take Oh, it's got the drip. Oh, and it turns the corner. Dang. Man, using a minecart and this is just it's going to get you thinking in so many different ways. I'm I've got to admit I'm a little bit torn. Like I want to use this for my own mod pack idea, but at the same time I kind of just want to play it in a survival world and uh and see how it works with various things, you know. Maybe what we could do in this series is... Oh, that's bonkers. Maybe what we could do later in this series is go build a farm. Like a kelp farm with some of these blocks. And see how it would all look and work. I think that would be a really good exercise. Because doing it in survival is so much uh, slower, of course. Quarry time, says hey indeed. I don't think I've managed putting a quarry together. Maybe we can get the help of some Psycrafters in here. <laughs> and they'll suss it out. I mean, they've done it in vanilla anyway. That's cool. Oh, that thing will literally quarry right there. Because it puts the items in the chest and brings the chest along with it. Uh, Curls of Doom says, damn, this is so above and beyond anything that I'm understanding in Minecraft. Yeah, well, it's just like a, a really big layer of complexity right there. Um, since we have pretty much gotten through most of this, I think that's a good note to end on right there. Uh, we know what we're going to be doing in some future streams of this. The next stream will be Skybees, though, so if you want a different take on modded Minecraft, I'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, as of right now, though, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, be sure to hit the follow button before you head out of this place. And I'm going to go do a riggedy raid. Who should we raid today? Uh, let's go for a random Minecraft channel. We have not a lot of viewers. Maybe someone out there is playing Create. In fact, if I do uh, Create Search, can I find someone playing Create? Oh, that's me. Okay, we don't want to raid myself. That is someone eating food. And this, oh god, this looks like someone's got a factory. I'm going to tune in for this one. Okay, we're going to raid JB Mango, who appears to have a factory <laughs> built with this create mod. So this is going to be a super interesting raid. Peeps, thank you to everyone who subscribed, resubscribed, donated, and cheered. Thank you to all of my Patreons. Thank you for all the gifted subs that we had as well. I'm just setting up the raid. So yeah, there we go. Okay, hit the follow button, hit the raid button, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.